To the untrained eye, this is a posh Audi A7. Well, posher. It's got 22-inch wheels, wide arches, and a big, aggressive face. Your neighbours will think you've done all right for yourself and have bought a shiny new toy to tool around in. And they're almost right. Except this isn't a posh A7. The car that we've bought to a dusty and occasionally muddy Morocco, hence the state of the motor, sorry about that, is the RS7, the fastest 7 Audi makes. Its big, angry face should be a hint as to its potency. It doesn't share much with the standard A7 either. The bonnet, the roof, the front doors and the tailgate are shared, but other than that, it's all bespoke for the RS. So it rides a standard on 21s. You've got big blistered wheel arches like what you got on Quattros in the 80s and there's loads of other RS bits to make it look big and mean and angry. And in grey, it looks pretty badass. That's the outside, but what about the inside? There's some jazzy trim here and there, some special RS badging so your passengers know they're not travelling in some diesel poverty wagon. There's the usual exciting upholstery and some aesthetic tweaks to the infotainment. If you miss the RS stuff outside and in, you need your eyes tested. And then there's under the hood. Under there is a four litre twin turbo V8 with 592 brake horsepower and 590 pound foot. That is lots. Lots enough, in fact, to get you from 0 to 62 in 3.6 seconds and up to a limited top speed of 155 miles an hour. Unless you apply money to the problem, then you can have an RS7 that will clip 189 miles an hour. That is with cash and extra bits in the car. Basically, just what you need for the school run. Now, this big V8 feeds its power to all four wheels, as we expect from Audi, via an eight-speed gearbox. But it's not only about the power. If you're cruising, the RS7 will shut down half of its eight cylinders to save petrol for when you need it most, and a mild hybrid system will let the car coast for 40 seconds at a time, preserving more delicious motion lotion. Audi reckons you'll get 23 mpg out of it on the new WLTP cycle. On the practicality front, I can quite easily sit behind myself in this car. I have plenty of room. However, because of that sloping roof line, Henry may struggle because he's quite tall and has, well, he needs hair room, doesn't he? Not something that will ever bother me. There's a 535 litre boot to play with as well, but it's not perfect because of the way that boot swoops down. If you've got a big chunky bag right at the back of it, well, the boot won't close properly, it'll shout at you, so you have to play some proper Tetris. We're riding on air springs at the moment, and Audi says that's so it can tune the different drive modes more precisely, which is all kinds of excellent, so we're in comfort now, and it's, it's delightful, and in sport it toughens things up, you know the jam. Basically, think of the RS7 as a more coupe-ish version of the already marvellous RS6, but there's a problem. The standard A7, the car this is based on, is a decent motor. It looks good, it's full of toys, and it'll make you feel special. In fact, the others in the ludicrously named four-door coupe class all have that special feel to them. The 8 Series Grand Coupe and the Merc CLS want you to be proud to have them on your drive. you get a set of pretty awesome touchscreens with a haptic response. So you can do all your infotainment stuff through them, like CarPlay and media and nav and all that stuff, and aircon. But you do get that haptic response. So when you press a button, you know you've hit your mark. Not everyone does that, and it's hugely important. Now, all these lines and swoops and curves and awesome bits of technology, they put in mind sort of this image of rolling through town having done big important business with big important business people and then you go home to your perfect wife and your perfect children and go and do some lifestyle activities you know like windsurfing or rollerblading the stuff that is really popular in adverts but very few people actually do in real life but all those exciting attributes merge into one blob things to boast about to your mates in the business bar the A7 and the cars it competes with feels like an accessory. They're the latest iPhone, all shiny on your drive and able to offer the world. But when the lease is up, there'll be something shinier to get attached to and deliver that little endorphin rush.
So what I want to know, really, is does that feel, that threat of disposability, creep in with the RS7, or is this going to go down in history as one of the greats? Well, to drive in comfort mode, you wouldn't really know you're driving a 600 horsepower car. You just wouldn't. It's quiet, it's comfortable, it's smooth. The gearbox slowly rifles from ratio to ratio. I mean, listen, there's nothing. The windows are double glazed. The V8 barely makes itself known. It's got all that cylinder shut-off technology and it'll coast without using any fuel. It's got the, the mild hybridization to save and eke every, every tiny little milliliter of petrol. It's a pleasant car. You can just drive it through town. It's lovely. But then you poke the angry bear because it's got all the bells and whistles of something that is genuinely angry at the world. That engine, when you're tonking along, it's a little bit on the quiet side, but outside, when it goes past you, it is unmistakably a big, angry V8. That is fantastic. It is part of a dying breed. Yes, it's got turbos on it. Who cares? That means it's got 590 pound foot. And oh my God, does 590 pound foot mean this thing shifts? It is unbelievably fast. Now this is riding on steels. You can have it with carbon ceramics, but these, we've been playing with them all day. No sign of fade, no sign of them crapping out on us at an inopportune moment. It's a really good package if you want to hustle. It really, really is. Apart from a couple of things. Inside, I would have wanted a bit more V8, just a bit more of that, that proper dirty, dirty four litre V8 noise because, well, who doesn't love a V8 noise? Especially if you're going to buy an RS car. Also, the steering, it's a bit of an Audi RS thing that it's never that great. Some of them have been awesome, but this, there's a little bit of a disconnect. Even in its sportiest settings, I don't get that feedback that you crave in a car like this. Yes, it is big, and yes, you can feel its weight, but you kind of want to feel involved when it comes to pushing it through the corners. Also, again, even in the suspension's strongest, sportiest, most dynamicest setting, it can feel a little bit soft and squidgy. Say on a mountain road, after a rough, long day, I kind of want it to ride and corner flat, or flatter than this. But, if you want to cross a continent very quickly, you can, oh my God. <laughs> it's 80 mil wider than the old RS7. You do feel that width. You feel its waist as well. It's knocking on two tons. So the fact it can move so quickly, not to 60 in 3.6 seconds, the fact it will do 189 if you pay Audi the money and get the dynamic bits that guarantee you can do it. It's an incredible feat of engineering more than anything else. It's not hugely efficient. After a day of tonking around the mountains, um, we've, we've averaged 14.4 miles to the gallon. That's it's not very many. I mean, we weren't using the cylinder shut off and I'm pretty sure the mild hybrid system was just going, guys, what are you doing? Just stop, stop, this is, this is just abuse. But what about that feeling of disposability? Yeah, like a three litre diesel standard A7, that's the kind of thing you go, yeah, I've got a nice car. I will now move it on because there is another nice car. But with RS, I think this engine, this powertrain, that makes it special. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it will still put a big grin on your face. It looks slick, it looks smooth, and it's something you can keep as a sort of objet d'art for as long as you want to. It's a mega thing. The last generation RS7 was a blinder. It was fast, looked good, and felt good. It was also subtle, which this isn't at all. The big, wide, angry look will make it stand out in the car park, but for a certain type of buyer, the shouty look is a bit much. This is a yellow velvet dinner jacket in a sea of midnight blue. I was right to worry that the RS7 may have that little air of disposability about it, but in reality, it doesn't. It's a really capable car. Yeah, it errs on the soft and squidgy side, 
but it looks great, it goes really well, and it makes you feel good. You can't say fairer than that.